Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of She Plays Final Fantasy XIV oh, Realm Reborn with Kovu. Carbuncle is not present at the moment, but today's episode, we are going to continue my little conversation I was telling you guys about leveling, when it is kind of an annoying thing. Um, so, this, the other method I was telling you about with leveling is the uh, Palace of the Dead, which, if you'll see this little lollipop right behind me, you only need to be level 17 to unlock. In Gridania, of course, you have to get to Gridania first, so if you don't start off in Gridania, you can either wander over there or you can just continue the main scenario. You'll end up eventually in Gridania so in some way, shape, or form. So anyway, this little Lollafell, Nojiro Marujo, is in the Adventurer's Guild, and he's located right here. And we're going to go ahead and accept. If you're poking around looking for work, you must be an adventurer too. Am I right? You won't find much here, I'm afraid. Seems the only thing people talk about these days is that nasty bit of business down in Isamhar. Surely you've heard the stories of a strange portal suddenly appearing in the ruins down there? Uh, no. Hey, don't give me that look. I'm only telling you what I overheard from the whalers. They say on the other end of it some sort of labyrinth. The thing is, every time they go down where the map to place it out, nothing is the same. A mystery if I've ever heard one. Frankly, I'm more than happy to let it stay a mystery. Strange apparitions, booby-trapped corridors, going down there is nothing short of suicide. Still, the prospect of treasure hunting is awfully tempting. <clears throat> Don't take my word for it, though. Head down to Isamhar and you can hear it straight from the Chocobo's mouth. Alright! Let's go to Isamhar, but before we go to Isamhar, there's another quest I'm gonna pick up right over here. I don't think this is a particularly long one, so we'll just go ahead and do that. Why not? Why not? A sight to behold. <sighs> As if I'm not busy enough without playing Lost and Found. Oh, do forgive me, friend. Once again, one of our customers has departed without her belongings, and I'm at a loss for what to do about it. While I understand that adventurers have many cares on their minds, it would make my life easier if they would keep, keep their personal effects in order. But you do not come here to lend an ear to my grumblings. This is the book in question. The face of its owner was unfamiliar to me, but Errol over there seemed quite smitten with her, as with every pretty lass he's laid eyes on, but that's neither here nor there. Might I trouble you to inquire as to the girl's whereabouts? I found the man to be less than forthcoming ever since I spurned his advances. Ew. So this guy over here. Hey, it's the guy that's right next to the lollipop that we just talked to. Ah, the sweet little thing with the journal. Of course I remember her, and remember her well. Had a smile to warm the heart, and a laugh, a lilt, one might say, to tickle the depths of the soul. And she was most eager to hear tales of my many travels, which speaks to a keen and sensitive mind. Jilly, I believe her name. No, that's not right. Jilly was a redhead from last week. Oh, damned if I can remember. You must understand, no small number of comely lasses seek out my company. I dare say keeping all the names and faces straight is an adventure in itself. At any road, the girl spoke of paying a visit to Apkalu Falls before traveling on. Like as not, you'll find her there now, shedding a tear or two at our parting. Do pass along my regards if you see her. She should be readily recognizable in that charming straw hat of hers. Oh my, this guy, he's like, he's definitely into the ladies. So we're gonna do Sight to Behold first, and then we'll do the house that dreamt on. So let's head to find this poor lass who's over in the Apkalu Falls. Oh, she's not that far anyway, so she's, she's still in Gridania. So we're good. And here she is right over here. Pardon, I don't believe we've met. Hmm, you have something of mine, you say? Yep, here we go, the age one log. My journal, thank the twelve, and my escape haste to escape the clutches of the insufferable mutton monger. It slipped my mind entirely. Why would I be so bold as to ask your name? You have my gratitude, Kovu. It may not look like much, but I count this humble diary among my most prized possessions. Its pages brim with tales of the most heart-stirring sights to be seen in our realm, as told to me by the sensitive souls I have met in my travels across the Orzia. Tales that have struck with the most incurable case of wonderlust. As an adventurer, you too have seen the realm, I am sure. But I would ask you, Kovu, have you truly seen her? Born witness to Eorzea in my, her myriads of splendor? Have you stood in the palm fringe beaches of Costa del Sol just as the sun peeks o right over the horizon, its rays kissing the sands beneath your feet? Have you lost yourself in the night sky of the Sigoli, 
adrift amidst a boundless sea of stars. Ah, but why do I try to convey with words that which must be seen to be appreciated? To our fortune, whithersoever we wander, yours yes, beauty is but a stone's throw away. If I may quote from my journal, yes, this is the one. Afore the fame beneath the two that here as one her divine cup runneth over with light ethereal. Such were the conjurer's words, and I would see as she saw. I saw for myself before coming here, and I could assure you that the conjurer spoke true. Indulge me. Go there and look out upon the beauty before you. I would hear your thoughts. So I think what she's trying to say is I need to go to the conjurer's guild, look out right around there, and then uh, come back. Yeah. All right, coming right up to Gridania. I'm gonna go ahead and lose our HUD for a minute. Aw, oh, look, you got the pumpkins. That's just because, you know, it's still Halloween and stuff. So nice. You have looked upon one of yours, yes, stirring vistas. As identified by the exploring Millith Ironheart, return to Apku Falls and report her sighting. So, well, here it is. One of the vistas. Oh, it is pretty. Are the trees always red? Huh. Welcome back, Kobu. I trust you were as moved by the sight as I was. The great stone that adorns the entrance to Stillgate uh, fame is none other than the Sky Serpent's egg, passed down from the heavens by Nofika, the matron, so long ago. And those mammoth tree trunks, remnants, no doubt, of a primeval forest, whence did they come? Why did the two great arbors grow as one? This I do not know, but what I do know is that the realm is replete with such beauty. If only we know where to look. This is what compels me to wander, not the promise of power, glory, or riches, but a burning desire to bear witness to all the wonders around us, as wrought by gods and men alike. Though we have just met, the twinkle in your eye tells me that we share certain aesthetic sensitivities. It would be my pleasure to gift you with a sightseeing log of your own. In its pages you will find my record of the most stirring sights in the realm, both those I have seen with my own eyes and those I have, thus far at least only heard of in my travels. No doubt your adventures keep you occupied, but this is not all the more reason to take in the sights as you travel, that both body and mind might enjoy a moment's respite from time to time, and who can say? Perhaps you will discover glorious new vistas that have eluded even me. With that, I wish you safe travels, Kovu. When you have seen all there is to see, pray return to me. I would like nothing more than to share impressions with a fellow sensitive soul. You're right. And that unlocks the sightseeing log. Now, it basically works just like when we went to the Conjurer's Guild. You find the vista, and then you just, like, do something according to uh, what it is. So you get clues. There's, like, Limsa. These are all Limsa. This is Middle Lanasia, Gridania, and so on and so forth. But it would say, like, under the azure sky, I gaze down upon worship Warships 3. Their billowing sails of crimson leaving no doubt as to who truly rules the seas. Such were the merchant's words, and I would see as he saw. So that is pretty much all you have to work with. Um, but we'll do a little bit more of that later. I just wanted to pick it up. So now, we finally get to go and work on the Palace of the Dead. I'm sorry, but I must insist that you... Oh, an adventure, and I rather seasoned looking one besides. On the off chance you are not simply here to gawp, perhaps you can lend us a hand? You see, despite the fervent protestations of the Dusk Whites over there, we cannot permit civilians within the ruins at this time. Capable men and women like you, on the other hand, are more than welcome, that is, if you've the stones for it. Pray seek out the other stationed at Quarry Mill, they can apprise you of the details. Ew, so I guess we're going to go to Quarry Mill. Interesting, interesting, yes. Alright, and we've arrived at Quarry Mill. Don't forget, if you haven't attuned yourself to an Aetherite, to make sure that you do that. That way you can teleport back here in a jiffy. And then here we are, the Wood, wood Whaler Expeditionaire. Well met, adventurer. I take it you have come to learn more of the recent happenings in Isamhar. 
The site is of interest owing to the Gelmoran ruins. Gelmora being an underground city which predates Gridania, in case you were unaware. Any road, a few days past, we received reports from several anthropogeographers that a magical gateway of some sort had appeared in the ruins and that all manner of creatures were coming and going through it. Hey, Gelmora was mentioned in the Conjurer quest. My men and I were among the first to examine it, and, well, it's hard to explain. We crossed the threshold into a set of corridors we'd never seen before, and then suddenly each and every one of us was filled with an inexplicable sense of dread. It was all I could do to take even a single step. According to E. Una Katar, who accompanied us, the ruins are warded with powerful magics that sap the spirits and aether of all who enter, rendering them easy prey for the creatures within. Thankfully, he managed to devise a solution. Aether pool arms and armor, which safeguard and channel the wielder's energy that they might withstand the ruins' magics. Unfortunately, it does little to prevent us from losing our way, though it beggars belief every time we have dared to venture into the ruins we have found the path to be changed. We suspect this too may be the work of an unfathomable, powerful mage. Needless to say, something strange is afoot, and traditional tactics are not like to suffice. Even experienced adventurers will need to proceed with caution. In any event, if you believe you have what it takes to brave the ruins and discover what secrets lie in the deepest depths, you need only say the word. Ah. Alright, so we have unlocked the Palace of the Dead. Now, the Palace of the Dead is not like traditional dungeons. You can go solo or you can enter in a party, but um, it is a randomly generated dungeon. And we are going to use this as an opportunity to get some levels on our white mage. Now... Alright, well, I have officially become Rayman. And, uh, we, we might need to fix this. <laughs> okay, now that we are not floating heads and hands and feet and a tail, um, let's go ahead and so... It really doesn't matter at all what you wear or what your level is. You could be a level one and you can still access uh, this dungeon. So let's go ahead and select this. And you'll see Deep Dungeon. It's like the traditional Final Fantasy menu. I love it. Uh, you can check, you can enter, reset your progress, which we ha don't have any pal progress. And you can learn about the Palace of the Dead if you really want to, but we don't want to. So, you are given an Aetherpool arm, which at the moment mine is at zero, and my armor is at zero. You want to get both of these up to level 30, and then eventually you can take them out of the dungeon. So let's go ahead and enter. You get two save slots, which is also reminiscent of the traditional Final Fantasies. I love it! So let's go ahead and hit the select. Um, we're just gonna go with a matched party, because I don't have anything and we're in all right so a couple things to note um, obviously, over here you'll see your map. It is ever-changing. Uh, and it only gets revealed, like, it's not like traditional maps. You can't actually see, like, where everybody is exactly. It's best to stay together. Try not to wander off on your own. Because even though these earlier levels are easy, it becomes much harder later on, so... And then over here, you've actually got your Ace of Pool arms and your inventory set. Now the inventory is actually shared, so everything that you get from the treasure copper will eventually pop into here. And you can actually use this. So here you go, you see someone picked up a... Oh, and they already used it. Um, I was going to show you guys, but you know, whatever. Um, anyway. You can access this menu by hitting C, so you can no longer see your character sheet. You can see the Cairn of Passage is right here, so when we want to progress to the next floor, we will use that. And there's the Cairn of Return, so if we... Alright, this is hard to... 
talk and try to keep an eye on the party at the same time. Because I am the healer. <laughs> uh, Alright, here we go. The pump Commander of Lust. Now this thing will actually turn you into a succubus. Which we don't need want to do necessarily just yet because it's going to turn you into a succubus. And that will be that. So it looks like everybody went over this way. Let's try to keep an eye on our party. So here we go. We are getting ready to progress to floor number two. I am in a Lullafell party. This is adorable. I feel like such a big man. Alright, treasure? Okay, so this is one thing that we want. Uh, the We want the increase in the armor. So you can actually see it is now plus three. Which is a very good sign. Again, you, your aim is to get to plus twenty. So that you can keep your armor. Bear in mind also there are traps uh, laid about the dungeon. Uh, you can't see them unless you use an item that can reveal them. It's also sometimes good to be careful about traveling in packs because if you step on a trap, it could potentially affect the entire party. Ah, just like that, see? That's why I like to keep somewhat of a diff distance. Alright, so there, this person... Okay. I guess we're all done here, so let's progress to the next... Next! Do, 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 do. Hey, cover. Me open. Oh, and they use it immediately. That, I don't see why they use it immediately. But, you know, whatever. Oh, the horde! Alright, so the dungeon pretty much progresses like this. Uh, you have to kill a certain amount of experience, or kill a certain amount of monsters to reveal a key, collect treasure chests for items. And then, yeah, progress up the floors. Once you reach 10 floors, you will potentially um, you'll finish the first group. There are 50 floors all together. So I'm going to go ahead and go up till about the final boss of the first 10 because there is a boss every 10 floors. And then I'll see you guys again in a minute. Oh, okay, so as I was saying about revealing traps on the floor, we actually used an item and that right there is a trap. So if you walk on it, you will actually trigger the trap there. Alright, we progressed through floor two. Ah, another visitor. So I missed it, but there was also something else that I wanted to show you guys. There was a yellow light, hopefully I'll see another one, a yellow light that was on the floor. Now that you want to step on, because that will actually, if you stand on it for a few seconds, it'll trigger a treasure chest, which will give you, think of it like prize goodies. The more you get them, it's random, it's random, and we'll be able to hand one in, like uh, once we finish the dungeon, but you get lots of prize goodies from them including your hairstyles, or minions, or, you know, random bunch of little things. Hopefully, I'll be able to show you guys one uh, the next time it pops up. Alright, so you can actually see it right there. Oops. This golden spot right here, we're going to clear out the room first. Ah, oh, I was worried, because this guy had actually disconnected. You see they're actually gathering on it, and you can see the banded and obtain a piece of the accursed horse. There we are. Alright. So we're doing good, we're doing good. Lovely. Oh, 
I guess we're going more for treasure chests. Hey, why not? Lots of treasure, I'm not complaining. Get a little XP bonus while we're at it. Just keep in mind that you have a time limit here. Alright, he's gathering it. Sometimes it's also not a good idea to get close to someone else who's getting a treasure chest because sometimes that, that chest is uh, trapped. And if it's trapped, then that could mean in all sorts of bad things. So, anyway, moving on. Nope, we're still missing our little buddy. Hey, there you are, little buddy. Oh, also, there are certain floors that have debuffs on them. For example, this one lowers your, um... HP, so you can see right here, HP penalty. Some of them give you pox, some of them do other things, but you'll notice a huge increase in the amount of experience points and how fast you're leveling, as well as, like, see, look at this, I am already level 18, and you start the Palace of the Dead uh, as a level one. Oh, there's another one, yay! I like getting these. These are good. I got a lesser pando from one one time. Yes, all of them. And you might even get a new hairstyle. Who knows? Alright, we've reached 410. This is the boss fight. Palace Death Gaze. Dun dun dun. He's honestly a joke. Like, a real joke. It's kind of pathetic, actually. Look at this, he's not he's almost already halfway through. I don't even think I'll have to heal anybody. Alright, I'm gonna give it to Mookie. Good game! Oh, it's got a summer That's what they're saying. You be on a Japanese server long enough, you start learning some of the kanji in hiragana. <laughs> hey look, they use it! That's the, that's the one thing that turns you into a, a demon. Pretty useful during boss fights, but you know. So this NPC that you're seeing in the cutscene right there was um, is actually a very significant NPC, but we haven't touched up on that just yet, and we won't for a little while longer. Um, so let me go ahead and show you those nice shinies that we got. So you can see that we got right here four bronze trimmed sacks. So we. When you have a bronze trimmed sack, you're not really sure what to do with it. You go to the expedi ex expedition bishop. Yeah, this lady right here. You have ventured into the ruins. Yes. Have you happened upon any peculiar bags shut tight by the magics of the palace? If you would know the value of these treasures, bring them to me, and I shall break the seals that binds them close. All right. So then you want to appraise them, and you'll see we have the four that we picked up. I'm go ahead and appraise it. Sometimes it's not great, like it might be a firework or something silly, but like this one, yeah, it's a magic spray, so nothing great. But occasionally you get a good one. Yeah, fire materia. Eh. Eh. Oh, well, not the best thing in the world, but you know what? I'll take it, the high house clock. Uh, so, I mean, you know, it's our first set. So what that looks like is, we'll go ahead and equip that here. We look fancy. You know what? I actually kind of matches my outfit. So, psh, I look banging. Woo -woo. All right. So, another thing. 
when we work on getting our weapons to 50, you'll be like, wait a minute, you left the dungeon, there's progress lost. No, it's saved. That's what the save thing was for, don't forget. But it only saves every once every 10 levels. You can't leave in the middle of the 10 levels and expect to go back. Um, greetings, I am E. Una Kotar of Paja of Gridania. As you may have noticed, the Wood Whalers have begun an exploratory survey of the strange labyrinth recently discovered in the ruins of Gilmora. Strange forces are at work here, and I have come to see the Wood Whalers are safe from harm. Alright, so here you can actually exchange pot shirts, which you don't get until you complete all 50 levels. Uh, you can request to keep your Earth Pool gear, which you cannot do until you get that plus 50 or plus 30. And then you can ask about the, uh, let's see, you wish to use your Aether Pool arm outside of the palace today? I apologize, but I cannot do in good conscience deprive you of the means to defend yourself in the ruins. I sense there is yet much to be discovered. Alright, so, yeah, we still have to do the whole dungeon, so, cat yawning. Oh, I know the cutest name ever. Very, very smoothly. You'll notice, I got the feeling this one is plus six and armor is plus four, so... We can go ahead and enter again and select the floor. We can start over if we want to, but I want to continue on my merry way, so let's do it. Party, new party, new music, new map. As always, let us uh, let us do the next ten floors, shall we? All right. So uh, things I was started thinking about while I was doing this again. There is a couple of catches to this dungeon. So if your entire party wipes, um, that's it. You have to start from floor either 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 again. You can get to floor 28 and then if you wipe on floor 28 you have to start from floor 20 again. You'll get kicked from the dungeon. So be very careful. Move on. Alright, floor 21 to floor 30 has begun. Alright, so we failed. Round 2. Fight! Alrighty, are you ready to go to floor 30? That was, that was a tricky, tricky situation. <laughs> Next boss up. The Ninjida. Oh, not a good idea to stay in the middle. And there's a particular reason for that. She was right behind us. Hey, Duke 
recommendations, heck yeah! Alrighty, floor 30 through 40. So the biggest weakness with the weakness with the last group I was in was that we didn't really stay together. Everybody kept Oh, and it's you again. Ugh. Alright, well, let's do it. Oh, this is gonna be a fun party. We're already split up again, as I was saying before, don't split up in the Palace of the Dead, especially when you have a healer with you. Oh, Jesus. Alright, well this has been the longest ten floors I have ever done on in the Palace of the Dead. <laughs> I got to say, this party was completely, completely disorganized. Running wherever they felt like, popping whatever items they wanted to, whenever they wanted to, and... Like, it's just been... There's been nothing but Linus sighting me, and it's been really, really frustrating to keep this party alive. Very hard to keep this party alive. I got to say that. I hate to say it. Normally I'm very forgiving with people, but this has been incredibly frustrating. Thank God this boss fight forces us to be in one room, or else they'd probably be running all over the place. So the tank would grab things and then start running into the room without actually fighting it. And he'd end up pulling, like, entire rooms. It's just so positively frustrating. definitely going to the bard because he was the only one that actually had the common sense to uh, raise me when I died when the tank just like took off so who thank you that that party is over that's why I'm saying thank you <laughs> hey I got commendations though but hey you know what <laughs> we made it through and that's the important part oh just so much frustration so much frustration so for the final ten floors. These three Kieran here are gonna join me for the <laughs> You guys are awesome. Uh, so I keep pronouncing his name wrong. I'm not entirely sure. Azel? Uh, he, he said like window? I don't know. Asil? 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 Windowsill? Asil? Uh, Ezra? And Leifrel? I don't know. Let me know if I'm still pronouncing it wrong. I know you're about to watch us. Sure. Mm. All right. So <laughs> let's join their party and see about doing the last ten levels. This should be interesting. Alrighty, let us go ahead and finish up the last ten levels of the Palace of the Dead. Alrighty, we are now leaving floor number forty-nine, going into floor fifty. This is the last floor of the Palace of the Dead. It would seem our guests have overstayed their welcome. Come, my love, let us show them the way out. Wow! That was the- oh, why did my frames have to drop? That was the- oh, seriously. He won with like a sliver of health, we all died, and then he won, like right at the last minute. Ah, dang frames! Oh, Kobu, so good to see you. I've started anew as an adventurer, just as I promised. Would that Avair could see me now. But how did I come to be in this place? I remember falling, and a robed figure.
What she said will make sense in due time. Um. <laughs> the concerned Chocobo is concerned. Edda slain. We just like to... And that completes the Palace of the Dead. Uh, we got a couple of bronze trim sacks. Let's go ahead and appraise those, see if we got anything good. Oh, Savage Materia 5. That'll probably sell nicely. Really? Really? <sighs> well, ahem. <clears throat> That concludes the episode. Very long episode. Well, at least it's been a very long time for me. It took me two days to do this. Uh, so I will see you guys next time on She Plays Final Fantasy XIV and Realm Reborn with Kovu. And hopefully less lag next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>